Good day, viewers. You are welcome back to class. My name still remains Israel. In our previous video, we explained some aspects of uh, practical chemistry, precisely titration to you, and we placed it in two parts. Please kindly study it very well and understand it properly. Today, we are going to sort analysis. Uh, and the questions we have programmed here, or we have predicted here, are questions you may likely encounter. Most likely, percentage is over 90%. We are going to encounter in this of forthcoming echo. Just look at it and understand properly. So let's get started. The question says, sample C and D are two simple salts. Can I the following analysis on them? To sample C, add water and stir. Tell the solution with litmus paper. Divide the solution into two portions. To the first portion, add sodium hydroxide in drops and then in excess. To the second portion, add ammonia in drops and then in excess. To the solution of sample D, add sodium hydroxide followed by copper 2 tetrahydrocarbons. Remember, we are also expecting, expected to test for chloride, chloride ions. However, they didn't bring silver trazonitrate 5. Now they bring, uh, we are supposed to use trazonitrate 5 acid followed by silver trazonitrate 5 to add wet precipitate, which will now dissolve in aqueous ammonia. They didn't bring that. Silver trazonitrate 5 is absent. But if they give you, don't forget, if they mistakenly bring it, they may bring it theoretically. Just know that you add um, HNO3, aqueous, don't forget to put aqueous, there will be no visible reaction. You now add silver trazonitrate 5. You have white precipitate. You are used to. If you are not used to white precipitate, go to my previous uh, videos. You have white precipitate. When you add ammonia, it will dissolve. So I, I believe that they may likely bring it in question theory, since it, it is omitted here. However, they they say we can use um, soda lime. Soda lime can also be used, but the, what we had in practical aspect did not agree with their theoretical um, explanation. That is why I'm leaving it out because the one I did practically did not agree with the theoretical version of it. So that's why I'm omitting it. So these are the ones we are going to explain. Just this thing and be blessed. Now, since you have already uh, seen the question, you now draw a table. This is the table you must draw. Don't say after writing it before I draw it. Sometimes you forget. Draw a good table. Good table is drawn like this. You have test, observation, inference. So just look at the first question. So sample C, add water and stir. You say sample C plus water, stir. So let's see what happens. So this sample C is known as zinc chloride. You can see it, so I'm out of it. And I'm putting to this boiling tube. However, when they are giving you your own, they will put it in. You can put a sample container for you. This is how we bought it. So that's why I'm using it like this. Add water. This is the zinc chloride. Remember it's soluble in water. By soluble means you can you can look at it. So I will shake it, see and stir. Please observe this thing very well. Don't go and use other things that are known. Uh, workable for this practical. You see, it, it dissolves. You go straight. Don't finish everything first before you start writing. As you get results, you write. Remember, if you miss the observation, your inference is wrong. So, sample C plus water. You say, sample dissolve. I told you the other time we we're preparing for why. You must not use soluble here. If you put it, it's a conclusive uh, word. So, it is marked wrong. Sample dissolve in water to give the colorless solution. You say soluble salt is present. Like I said, if you are confused with anything, go to my previous video, you will understand better. So you can see colorless solution, like water. Remember water has no color. That's the same thing with this. Then the next question, <coughs> So solution, test the solution with litmus paper. One thing you must know, NECO, they are very, very strict on this, so, so you have to be very, very careful when you are doing it. When they say test with litmus paper, don't use only one type. But if you don't have uh, uh, multiple litmus paper, that you don't have double litmus paper, that's the red and the blue. If you if you change the color of blue, you know you know that you cannot change the color of red. You use your initiative. But if you have both of them, which they may likely supply you in your various schools, you use the two to test. So like you can see, this blue litmus paper 
You know, also bring the other type. This is the red lit monster paper. Let's start with the red lit monster paper. You can see the solution. Add this to touch red lit monster paper. You see, produce no color change. Let us it to touch. Remember, you must make it moist. I'll do that one again. You see it moist. That's damp or wet. If you don't put it, the ions will not be will not be released for to produce the color change. Therefore, you must wet it first. You can see it has started producing a color change on this blue litmus paper. So you change the color of blue litmus paper. Let's do the red again. No effect on red litmus paper. Don't forget, these are the colors. So you come here and write. You say test with litmus paper. You may forget to write wet or damp. So you can put wet here. Wet litmus paper. You must use the two type. Change or just specific. Wet, blue, litmus, paper, changes to red, but no effect on wet, red, litmus, paper. You see solution is acidic. So you are true with that. Then the next one, to the first portion, you say divide into two portions. You just take it like this. Divide into two portions doesn't mean you should share these two because the quantity you have is different from the quantity our last student have. So if it's like this, don't just put little, little. Little two place, you still have your reserve. So I'll add little. The smaller the better. So look at the little quantity I have here. Then I also have another one. You say into two. See the, next, the other quantity I have, they are very, very small. So we'll give me perfect results. Then, instead of the first portion, I also don't have those drugs and in excess. So I bring this first one. This is my sodium hydroxide. Add the drops. You see, in drops, you have white gelatinous precipitate. It's like that, that cloud. If you look at, if you have to look at cloud, the way they are chipping to themselves. That's how you know white gelatinous. It's not smooth like powdered meat. So you say first portion plus N A O H aqueous. We don't write aqueous, they don't mark it wrong in drops in SS. You say white gelatinous precipitate in drops. Then here you have zinc. And aluminium suspected. It's just suspicion for now. So we add in SS. In SS, precipitate dissolves. So that one is done. The precipitate dissolves in SS. Why the Latin precipitates soluble? You can use soluble here or still dissolve. In SS N A O H aqueous. You still repeat the same thing Z N2 plus A L3 plus suspected. Both of them cannot be present, don't forget that. Then to the second portion, add say second portion plus aqueous ammonia in drops, then in SS. See that so this is our second portion we have see it's this small the smaller the better so i add a kiosk ammonia this ammonium hydroxide or aqueous ammonia i'll add a little you see it white precipitate also it drops i see white gelatinous precipitate it draws. 
let's add the lessons. It's consuming much. You can see it dissolves in excess. So you can use soluble. Why the lactinol precipitate in drugs dissolve in excess or soluble in excess? So you pay the same thing on top. You have ZN2 plus AL3 plus suspected. Then soluble in excess. Under the soluble in excess, ZN2 plus present. So that's what you have there. Remember, zinc is gelatinous soluble in both of them. If it's aluminum, aluminum will not be soluble. Then you have to the solution of sample D. As to do my result, followed by copper two sulfate that I received. It was gotten from carbon. And this is the solution we have. You see it. This is the solution we have. Let's just do it once. Because you know what we are going to do. As to do hydroxide to make the medium alkaline. So I add sodium hydroxide. So that the medium can be alkaline. I want the sodium hydroxide. They actually produce color change. So I now add copper two tetrazosophysis solution. This dilute test. Test for protein. So I add CUSO4. You see it. You see it, it's violet coloration. You can see it yourself. It's not blue, it's violet coloration coloration. You can see blue, blue here. Look at this. It's not blue. Blue, violet. We have to this so solution of sample D. You say solution of sample D plus CUSO4 aqueous plus sorry. NaOH aqueous plus CuSO4 aqueous, the violet coloration. Coloration. Um, protein present. This is all we can take, and this is our prediction for this forthcoming NECO exam. But study it very well, try to understand it. Remember, in our previous video, our prediction was 99.9%. This one, we believe, is going to be the same. Remember, I told you, if you are in the theoretical aspect, maybe question theory, or even in this question, they may write it by themselves. They give you um, uh, silver transonitrate 5. Is, you just, once you see silver transonitrate 5, you know that is chloride they are testing for. They will, say, they will tell you to add transonitrate 5 acid followed by silver transonitrate 5 and then ammonia. It must dissolve in ammonia to confirm it. However, if you are not given ammonia, you can see uh, use, uh, 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 use silver transonitrate 5. But once you cite silver transonitrate 5, you know that chloride ion is not chlorine or chloride ion. It's what you are testing for. Thank you very much. Can you help me to share? God bless you.